Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're doing our second Hatha YouTube recording today for Harmony Yoga. So just like the other day, some basic props might help you out today. Um, a blanket or a towel to sit on, even two towels if you need a bit more lift under your seat. Um, I've once again got my tissue boxes in place of blocks. Um, a scarf can be used as a strap if you have a strap. Please feel free to use all the official props. I just want you to know that there are options. You don't have to run out and buy something to do this practice at all. Um, so for today, we're going to go ahead and start laying down on our back, just however is comfortable to you. So you can always put your blanket or your towel under your head, under your hips, under your back, under your knees to make sure you've got the right amount of support here. And sometimes if your low back is tight, just keeping the knees nice and deeply bent, feet on the floor. It can feel nice to put your feet a little bit wider apart across the, the mat from side to side and let the knees kind of collapse in until they support one another, especially if you're feeling a little bit of tightness or stiffness today. You can let your arms relax softly alongside your body, put your hands on your belly, one on the belly, one on the heart, or anything that feels very, very easy for you and extremely comfortable so that this stillness we're creating within the body can kind of deepen to the more subtle layers of our being, softening into the breath, softening into the mind, softening into the emotions, letting all effort, any strain or struggle kind of fade into the background so that through and through, way down deep, you feel very easeful as you come into stillness here. And that may look different day to day. So you don't have to set your body up the same way you did yesterday or the same way you hope to do tomorrow. But as your eyes close, really focus on what changes and shifts moves your body and just focus on the body maybe towards that place where it can comfortably and naturally let go. Because all these layers of our being are connected. So if we just start with the most tangible, the level of the body, and begin to find softness and comfort there, whatever that looks like for now, that'll allow us to unlock and connect with those more subtle layers that we were talking about before, the breath, mind, heart. So as you allow yourself to still into a place of stability and calm, you can take time to lengthen the breathing if you want, but don't let the lengthening of the breath disturb your peace of mind or the softness in your heart or the ease in your muscles. Let this deeper and deeper breath only serve to accentuate the relaxation, almost like it's spreading the comfort through your body, not testing its boundaries, but letting it spread further, wider, deeper, lower, higher, till the whole body starts to feel even more soft, even more relaxed than it did before. And as you find that rhythm of breathing that really allows you to rest here, take three to five breaths in whatever time it takes. Moving slowly and gradually through your inhales and your exhales, not shortchanging your breath out. Very common to do. Maybe begin to allow the breath to lessen so it's a little bit lighter, higher, subtle. As you come back to a place where breathing is a comfortable neutral, your hands are on your belly or your body, you can slide them off. If your legs are straight, bend them up so the knees point towards the ceiling. And if your knees are already bent, but they touch, let them separate. And let's all step our feet wide apart to the longest edges of the mat. Let the arms be soft for a moment. Take a big, soft, long breath in here. 
And as you exhale, let the knees dip over towards the left. So you kind of rock to the outer edges of your feet. Inhale, bring the knees back to center. Let the soles ground. And exhale, tip the knees over towards the right. Inhale up. Exhale to the left. Inhale up and exhale to the right. I'm going to start to add on a little bit here. So breathe in, let the knees rise. Exhale and leave the knees to the left. And this time as you inhale, sweep your right arm up alongside your ear. And exhale, sweep your right arm down, back to along the edges of your ribs. Inhale, bring the knees to the sky. And exhale, the knees to the right. We'll do the same thing. Leave the knees here. Inhale, the left arm up alongside your cheek. Exhale, the arm down alongside your hip. Inhale, the knees up towards the ceiling. One more with a little bit extra. Exhale, the knees left. Leave them there. Inhale, the right arm up alongside your cheek. Leave it there. Exhale, roll your gaze to the right like you're looking at your right elbow. And then we'll reverse it. Inhale, the gaze to the ceiling. Exhale, the right arm down alongside your body. Inhale, the knees up to the sky, and last time on the right, exhale, the knees down. Leave them there. Inhale, the left arm alongside your cheek. Leave it there. Exhale, turn your gaze toward your upraised arm. And exhale, roll your gaze back to the ceiling. Go ahead and lower your arm down, and bring your knees back up to center, feet flat, coming to the midline. Go ahead and pick your feet up and hug your knees equally in towards your belly. You can wrap your hands around them if you want. Take a moment to rock side to side, letting one hip lift as you shift the weight towards the other hip. And then as you come back into stillness here, you can go ahead and roll over onto your side or rock up and down along the length of your back to kick your way up to a seat, depending on how you feel in the moment coming onto your sit bones. And if you want to pop your hips back up on that towel or that blanket, go ahead. So once you get here, keep the legs comfortably crossed and you can kind of cup your knees with the hollows of your palms. And inhale, lift your heart to the sky, let your shoulders shrug down your back and lift your chin so your gaze is upwards. Exhale, bring the chin down, round the shoulders forward, draw the heart down and the belly back. And then inhale. Belly stretches, heart lifts, gaze elevates. And exhale, chin down, shoulders forward, heart and belly draw towards one another like they want to meet. Let's do two more. Inhaling, roll the shoulders down the back, lengthen your throat. Exhale, shoulders forward and chin drops. Last time, inhale. Big and deep and full and exhale, curl up and in on your center. And go ahead and inhale, come back to a comfortable neutral seat, arching in neither direction, and take your right leg out to the side. Let it set itself off to the side at an angle, and you can bring your left foot in so it touches the inner leg wherever it wants to meet. So as you're here, breathe in and sit tall, lengthen up, and decompress your spine. Exhale, hinge forward, and just let the fingertips maybe for starters land on the ground. You don't have to go down too low unless it's really easy for you. We have some time to develop options. So once your fingertips land or your most easeful place touches the ground, whatever that is for you, breathe in. And as you exhale, draw your right toes back and press away through your heel just a little bit like you're trying to knock over something that's just out of your reach. Breathe in. And as you exhale here, if you want to place your palms flat to lower a bit more into the stretch, you can, but you don't have to. If your palms are already lowered, and by all means, step your hands out in front of you, but we're just warming up. So take a last breath in. And the last breath out. Keep that foot flexed as you breathe in. Walk your hands back. Bring your shoulders above your hips. Good. Put your right hand on your thigh. And inhale your left arm up alongside your ear. Go ahead and slide your right hand down over the bump of your knee. And tip your shoulders sideways. Make sure your top shoulder doesn't fall down. We're not looking towards our legs. You want to keep that shoulder kind of stacked on the side of your rib cage so you can clearly see your screen. Hi. Take a breath. Exhale it out. And then inhale, lift that top arm up. Exhale, lower the arm down to the side. Keep the right leg as is. Turn your shoulders to face your toes. And as you exhale, lower down. 
place one hand on either side of that long leg. Now I say hand in the broadest sense of the terms. I like to start on fingertips because my hamstrings are tight. So it's okay if you want to just tent your fingers here. Take a breath. Exhale it out. Maybe if you want to bend your elbows a little bit or come down to your palms. I'm going to do so very delicately because I'm still waking up my hammies right now. Inhale, lift the palms, walk your hands back. Turn your shoulders back towards me and let's cross your legs back to where you started. Sit for a second and feel the difference in the warmth and the elasticity of both legs. Maybe you'll notice it more when we bring the hands down in front of you. Kind of walk your hands forward a little bit and take a bow. Sometimes it helps here if you're feeling any compression in your knees to flex your feet, draw your toes back like kind of they want to touch one another in front of you. That'll keep the rotation here in your hips and keep your knee joints safe. Let's do a full breath in and out. And with your next inhale, walk your hands back. Relax those flat toes. Maybe give them a little wiggle. And take your left leg out to the side and do the same thing. So you can bring the foot in to touch the inner leg. Inhale and lift up, sitting tall, heart square towards the front of your room. Don't worry about that leg. It can stay off on its own angle. And hinge straight down in front of you. Doesn't take much. Maybe start on your fingertips. This is a nice, compassionate way to allow tight hamstrings to wake up. Breathe. Always breathe. Maybe you want to draw those far toes back a little bit. Just activate the foot. Maybe press away through your heel. And I'm talking a millimeter here. If you want to go deeper, maybe you lower your palms flat. But remember, we're warming up. So sometimes less is really more. So go ahead and keep those toes up and walk your hands back. Good. Place your left palm on your thigh. Your right arm up to the sky. Feel like... Your fingers are reaching up very gently towards the ceiling, but so is the crown of your head. Like you're a marionette, you've got two strings lifting you up. And then tip your shoulders over towards the left, slide your hand down. Let the shoulders stay stacked sideways, don't let them collapse, you're doing great. Take a moment to breathe in and out. Last one in and out. And this time as you inhale, you can let that top arm travel up and lower the arm down alongside you. Keep that long leg active one more time. Turn your shoulders square towards the front of your foot and then lower down very gently and let the fingertips drop to the ground on either side of your leg. Now, if this is a lot for you, you can always walk your hands back a little bit, kind of keeping the rotation instead of going for emphasis on the forward fold. Think rotate first. Fold is only a bonus. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, walk your hands back, sit up straight, turn your shoulders back to me, cross your ankles, and one more time, bring the hands down. Maybe feeling a little bit different here since we've opened both legs, and maybe flexing your toes back towards one another so the feet are a little bit more active. That should give your knees a little bit more kindness. So one full breath in, and one full breath out. And on your next inhale, you can walk your hands back, sit up nice and tall, wiggle your toes, let them go. Close your knees like you're closing a book, uncross the ankles, and we're going to roll over to all fours. So go ahead and lift your hips. And you can either pad your knees if you want with your blanket, with your towel, with whatever you got, or set it to the side if you're feeling fine without it. And that can change on a daily basis. So really listen to what your knees feel like doing in this moment. Forget about what you did yesterday. All right. Creases of the wrist straight down under your shoulders. Knees under your hips, toes pointing backwards. So we'll do a few cat-cows here. Inhale, lift your hips up and let your belly spill towards the mat. Glide your shoulders away from your ears and turn your gaze straight out towards the wall in front of you. The wall, not the ceiling. And as you exhale, lift your belly button up to the sky, arch your back, and let your ears dangle between your arms. We'll do a few more. Inhale, hips up, belly open, shoulders back, gaze straight out in front of you. And exhale, raise the belly button, arch the back. Maybe even press through your palms a little bit here as the spine climbs to the sky. Let's do two more and activate that with a little press as the back arches. So exhale, round, give a little press deep down. And last one. Inhale, hips up, heart and gaze forward. Exhale, round your back and press gently through your palms. All right, so go ahead and soften your spine into neutral. And as you're here, what I want you to do is sweep your right arm out to the side and just bring the wrist in line with your shoulders. We're not going up super high. In fact, it's not about this arm at all. It's about the supporting arm. 
So keep the arm, your right arm at shoulder height and press down through your left palm. Feel like you're lifting your shoulder off your upper arm bone and just hold that there for five, four. I'm gonna count you down. Three, two, one. Inhale and exhale, sweep that floating arm down. Flip the palm to face your heart and slide the back of your hand across the mat in between your knee and your wrist and bend your left elbow until your right shoulder and right cheek come down onto the ground. Good. Take a few breaths here. And maybe focus on that left palm on the mat. Usually it's in front of your face or around that area. And slide that left hand above the crown of your head towards the top of your mat. Just kind of glide it. It's never going to lose contact, but you'll kind of feel like you're peeking underneath your left bicep here. Take a last breath. And exhale, slide that left palm back. It never picks up. Land it in front of your face. Press down into it just like we did before. Lift the shoulders. Slide this right arm out and bring it right up to shoulder height where we started. Keep it floating. Press down through your um, bottom palm and hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Lower that floating palm down. Let it land. And as you keep both hands on the earth, inhale, lift your hips. Roll your shoulders back and exhale, round your spine up towards the sky. Good. We're going to do that one more time with the opposite arm. So come back to neutral. Left arm this time. Hover out to the side, horizontal to the ground. Just keep it floating and press the earth away through your right hand. You're going to kind of feel your upper back puff and round and pick up. So five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, sweep that floating arm down. Turn the palm up towards your chest. Glide your fingernails under the body all the way to the side as you bend the right elbow and lower onto your right cheek. Inhale. And if you want, you can keep the right hand in contact with the mat, but glide it out in front of you. Take some pressure off that wrist. If you want, you can even rest up on fingertips, tend to your palm. That'll kind of arch your wrist after being so flat and supporting you. And then relax the palm down to the ground. Bring it back in front of your face. Press down into it one more time to lift up your shoulders and chest. Sweep the arm out wide to where you started. Root down through your right palm. Five, four, three, two, one. And lower the left hand down to the ground. One more time. Breathe in. Lift your hips and your head. Shoulders slide down towards your hips. And exhale. Arch your back round, relax the neck. Keep this arching of the back. Let the hips lower back towards your feet. Let your belly sink down across your thighs. You can let your arms spill out in front of you as your head comes to the ground. I always like to take this moment to keep my elbows very, very soft and roll my wrists around a little bit. You can even flip your palms to the sky and give a little wiggle like little twinkling raindrops. Good. Now when you're feeling a bit better here, you can flip your palms face down to the mat. And lift your head so you can turn the gaze towards those fingertips. Make sure your wrists are parallel with your shoulders before sliding the palms out in front of you so the elbows lift up a bit. Keep some space between your fingers so you have a broad foundation. Rise to your knees. Once you're on your knees, we're going to scoop the toes under so the heels stand tall. And like we did before when we were sweeping our arms up to the side, press your hands down into the earth. Press them down and lift your knees up. Resist the ground. Keep the knees nice and bent as you reach your hips away from your wrists, like you're making the angle of a playground slide from your hands to your seat. Then if you want, you can soften your heels a little bit and maybe go for a walk in place. So bend one knee and lift one heel, put it back down, bend the other knee, lift the other heel, switch it off side to side, and then come back into stillness. Let's take one deep breath here and press your sit bones away from your palms. And exhale, walk your feet up the length of the mat towards your hands. The weight's going to come off your palms. That's fine. Soften your knees. Let the crown of your head dangle towards your toe tips. And maybe hold on to opposite elbows. Let the palms curve around the opposite elbows and sway your torso side to side a few times. Good. Come back to center and release the arms. Bend the knees and let the hips lower down closer to the earth so you're coming into a a deeper squat here. Reach your arms out alongside your hips. Keep the elbows in line with the curves of your waist. Keep the legs in this shape, but hinge the upper body up as far as it can go. 
and then press your feet into the mat to stand straight and tall. Open your arms, lift them up to the ceiling, and exhale, bring the arms down to center in front of your heart. Good. So again, we're going to sweep those arms up. Take a big breath in like you're gathering up the sky. Exhale as the arms open, soften your knees a bit and hinge out with a flat back before you dangle down. Let the arms drip away from your shoulders. Bring the hands up to your shins if you want for halfway rise. And then exhale, bend your knees enough that the fingertips at least can come to the ground for some support. Step your right foot back. The toes will be under. Lift your hips up to the ceiling a bit so you have room to slide the right, uh, the left foot back too. Coming into your down dog, remember to keep the knees gently bent so you can reach the hips off the wrists. Then go ahead and roll your shoulders forward, head towards the front of the room. Let your hips drop down into the top of the push-up here. Good. Let the knees come down and untuck the toes so the tops of the feet lay flat. Scoop your tailbone under and zip your belly button up towards your heart. That'll flatten out the angle of your back. Again, kind of like a playground slide. Bend your elbows and let them brush the edges of your rib cage as you come all the way down to the flat front edge of your body. Root your hips deeply down. Breathe in, lift your shoulders and head up so you can look forward. Keep the elbows pointing backwards. And then exhale, go ahead and lower all the way down. Go ahead and lift your belly. Come up onto hands and knees again. Toes under. Knees up, keep them softly bent as you reach back through the hips, like someone's pulling your pelvis towards the wall behind you. And then walk your feet up the length of your mat. If you're feeling adventurous, you can hop. Raise your palms up to your shins and rise up halfway. Exhale, relax down. Soft knees, gentle spine. Let the hips lower down, come into your squat. Reach the arms back behind you. Thumbs will point away from your body. Keep the bend in the knees. Hinge up with a flat back. Press your heels down to rise up all the way. Let the arms ascend. And then exhale, bring the arms down. Let them connect in front of your chest. Okay. Inhale, reach out and up. And exhale, out and down. Remember to soften your knees and hinge from your hip creases out. And then let yourself softly melt towards your toes. Good. Halfway rise. If you've got loose hamstrings or long arms, you don't have to bring your hands up to your shins. You can keep them on the ground. And exhale, relax, let your hands touch the earth. So it's just the right foot this time that's going to step back all on its own. Go ahead and step the right foot back. Keep the toes curled under. Keep the right hand on the mat. Or if you've got short arms like me, make a fist. Right palm into a fist. Breathe in and sweep your left arm out to shoulder height. We did this before, remember? So press down through your fist or your right palm for five, four, three, two, one. Then inhale and sweep that left arm up to the sky and turn your shoulders sideways. And exhale, lower that arm down. Let the fingers tickle the ground. You can unclench your fist if you have one. Lift your hips up a bit and slide your left foot back alongside your right. Keep a good, you know, four to six inches in between your big toes. Inhale here. And exhale, glide your shoulders forward. Come to that plank, that top of a push-up. Bring the knees down. Uncurl your toes, flatten the feet, press your hips gently down towards the ground so your back flattens out, bend your elbows, lower down upper body strength until you land. Good, keep the hips down, let the shoulders and head lift up, roll the shoulders down your back, keep your hips rooted, and exhale, come all the way back down, relax a second. Lift up off your heart, off your belly, onto your knees, toes under, knees up, keep that bend, as you stretch back through your tailbone. And then it's just the right foot this time that's going to step forward. If you only get halfway, you can always reach back and scoop it. Keep the back knee lifted. The, the left knee is going to be floated. Left palm on the ground or a fist. Or if you want, this is a great time to grab one of those blocks or tissue boxes. Sweep your right arm up to shoulder height and just hold it there. Press down through your fist or your bottom palm for five. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, raise your right arm up the rest of the way. Let your shoulders stack side to side, top to bottom. And then bring that top arm all the way back down. Uncurl your fist and step your back foot to the top so you're standing on your own two feet at the very front of your mat. Inhale, halfway rise. Nice flat tabletop spine. And exhale, relax yourself into soft knees and a loose spine. 
Hips settle down a little bit lower. Let them sink. Arms reach back. I always feel like a skier here about to go downhill. Lift your belly, your heart, your shoulders, your head. Press through your heels. Open the arms. Climb towards the ceiling. And then relax the arms all the way back down in front of your chest. Okay. Again. Inhale up. Breathe deep. Exhale open. Soft knees long back. Hinge it out. Hold it down. And then step just your right foot back this time. And spin the ball of your right foot so the toes point towards the right edge of your mat. And drop your foot down sideways so you can clearly see your arch. From here, pick up your hands. Come to standing. Open your arms front to back. Short end to short end. Good. Take a moment here. I always like to adjust my stance. So make sure your heels are aligned with one another. That's a nice, safe neutral here. Back toes can be pointed straight towards the long edge of your mat or tipped a little bit inwards towards your front foot. All right, so what we're gonna do here is make sure you're pulling your front knee away from your body towards your pinky toenail, just a little bit, like you've got a little bit of a magnetic pull through the outer edge of your thigh. We're gonna move a little bit here, but first we're gonna play with the arms. So keep the arms kind of at shoulder height, but flip the thumbs up. So your palms are facing in the same direction as your heart and as your gaze. Okay, so as you inhale, I want you to straighten your front leg, swing your arms together like you're clapping your palms in front of you. And as you exhale, bend your front knee and swing your arms wide back to where you started. Feel like you're breathing into your upper back between your shoulder blades. Let's do that twice more. So inhale, spread the shoulder blades, breathe deep into the center. And exhale, bend the knee, arms open wide. Remember to always draw that knee towards your pinky toe. So we'll do last one. Inhale, stand tall, fill your upper back. Exhale, arms wide, knee draws towards the pinky. Pause. All right. So from here, just straighten your front knee and let your hands swing down until they rest on your hips. Good. Turn your toes fully, all 10 of them, towards the longest edge of your mat. So now you're truly standing sideways. Make sure the outer edges of your feet, like the outer ball of your pinky toe and the outer line of your heel, are about parallel to the short ends of your mat. Inhale and lengthen up through your spine. Remember, feel like you're a marionette, the crown of your head is pulling up, up, up. And then exhale, flat back, long legs hinge forward. Glance at the earth. Release your arms. And take a moment to dangle here. If you want to bend your elbows and let your body just kind of pour over the ground. Make sure you keep weight in the outer edges of your feet so you don't sink down into your arches. If your arches rock in and collapse and your pinky toes lift up, make sure to ground down through the outer blade there. All right, so maybe one more breath. And then straighten your back up to about halfway horizontal. And whether through fingertips or palms or whatever you've got anchoring you against the ground, press down. So you get a little bit of a puff to your upper back, like the back of your heart wants to rise up a bit to the sky. You're not arching, but you're broadening that space between your shoulder blades, let's say. Breathe deep right there. Then bring your hands up to your hips. Let your knees bend a little gently. It's not a big bend, just release any, any locking. And then slowly start to hinge your body straight up until you're standing again. Good, take all the time you need for the blood flow to reverse. Now once you get here, turn your toes open, kind of like at um, 45 degree angles, your heels are gonna come in. Keep your hands on your hips for now, inhale where you are, and as you exhale, bend both knees wide towards your pinky toenails, feel like someone's pulling them back towards the wall behind you, let your hips sink straight down, nice. Okay, inhale, come up, we're just gonna do three of those. So that was one, we're gonna count that one, we're feeling generous today. Exhale, bend your knees, sink your hips, and inhale up. Okay, now that you're pros at this, go ahead and bend your knees, sink your hips, and stay put. Legs stay here, bring the palms together in front of your heart. Slide your palms up in front of your gaze and let the elbows touch in front of your heart instead. Okay, breathe in to that space between your shoulder blades. And as you exhale, separate your arms like a cactus, side to side like a goal post, and slide your shoulder blades towards one another. And inhale, bring your arms back to center. Puff up that balloon. 
And exhale, open your arms, squeeze the shoulder blades together softly like you're trying to pop it. Last time, inhale. And exhale. Yep. Inhale, arms back together. Exhale, hands down to your hips. Inhale, straighten your legs. Thank goodness. So go ahead and turn your back toes to point towards the long edge of your mat and turn your left toes out to face the front of your mat. So from here, we're just gonna bend the front knee. We're gonna lean forward. We're gonna bring the hands down. Fingertips count. Always use your tissue boxes if you can't, boxes if you can't quite reach the ground. All right, lift your back heel, spin the toes forward and lower your knee down to the earth. Now, once your knee comes down to the ground, if you want, you can always put a blanket under here, but we're not gonna be on our knee for long. So go ahead and flatten your back foot so the toes point back towards the wall behind you. If you do not have a lot of support through your fingertips or your palms, if you feel like you can't really get a good foundation down here, please, by all means, grab some blocks. It'll lift your shoulders up a bit higher. What you're gonna do is keep the top of your back foot flat. And as you breathe in, I want you to lift your knee and let your leg become a long angle. You're gonna get a lovely stretch down the front crease of your ankle and then bend your knee and come back out of it. Twice more, lift the knee, kind of press down through the top of your foot and then let it come down. Last time, press it down, lift it up and then let the knee come all the way back down to the mat. Keep the knee on the mat and scoop the back to toes under. Now I'm a big fan of blocks or tissue boxes for this next one. So when you're here, you wanna lift your front toes up and balance on the back of your heel. Once you're balanced on the back of the heel, you can walk your props back and let your hips lower towards your back foot. If you can get your hips all the way down towards your heel, and you're kind of wondering what the big deal is here, then all you have to do to find your own version of challenge is lower your front toes and walk your foot farther out in front of you. Try an inch, a little bit goes a long way. Then lift the toes and walk back again. Usually you get less far down. You can do this a couple of times. Think splits is kind of your full expression. I'm not getting there today, but you can do that a little bit more if you want. So make sure you're breathing. Take one more breath, nice. And then go ahead and bend your front knee, walk your blocks forward. And once your blocks get down to the ground, go ahead and set them to the side. Fingertips or palms down to the mat, lift your back knee, lift your hips a bit and slide that front foot towards the back, come into your down dog. All right, take a few moments to breathe here. Reach the hips back on your next inhale. And as you exhale, go ahead and step your right foot forward towards that space between your thumbs. Again, I like to wiggle with my toes to get it up there where I really feel supported there on the flat of my foot. And then spin your left toes to the left edge of your mat, lower the foot sideways, flatten the heel, lift your hands, keep the front knee bent, open your arms front to back, and you should be facing the opposite long end of your mat. So take that moment here, make sure your heels are aligned, always pays to double check. Back toes will be towards the long end or tip slightly inwards, right? Front knee, bend it forward and kind of pull it towards your pinky toenail like a centimeter usually. Good. So as you're here, I want you to flip your palms up towards the ceiling. Thumbs up towards the ceiling, I'm sorry. And palms facing the same direction as your heart as if you're gonna like give a big bear hug to the wall in front of you. That's what we're doing. Okay, so straighten your front leg. Swing your arms closed in front of you, clap and take a big breath into that space between your shoulder blades. And as you exhale, bend your knee towards your pinky toenail and swing your arms wide, bear hug the wall. All right, inhale, hands clap, legs straight. Exhale, knee bends, arms open, hug the world. Last one, inhale, straight legs, let the palms touch. Exhale, arms apart, knee bends, good. Breathe in. And then as you're ready, you can just straighten your front leg, bring your hands down to your hips. All done there. Turn your toes, all 10 of them, towards the longest edge. You're really facing the wall squarely here. Check the outer edges of your feet so they're parallel. Lengthen up through the crown of your head. Almost feel like you're pressing your hips down a little bit, so you're really getting some, some elevation here. And then exhale, hinge. 
Let your hip creases draw back. Reach your arms down and let yourself dangle over the earth for a moment. Now remember before we talked about pressing into the outer edge of your foot, right? There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. So if you press really hard to the outer edges of your foot, the ball of your big toe may lift up. So that's going to be your counterweight. Keep the ball of your big toe anchoring down and the outer edges of your feet anchoring down so you have that healthy arch. So maybe take a full breath in and out here. And then rise up about halfway. Come to straight arms on fingertips, palms, fists, whatever you got. And press those hands down into the ground so you feel a bit of that puff in your upper back. And like you're resisting the earth. This is really strengthening the muscles that stabilize your shoulder blades onto your back. It's called the serratus. It's right here. So inhale. Exhale. And inhale. Lift the hands up to the side of your hips. Soften your knees a bit just to make sure they're not ramrod straight and then hinge your body up to standing. Good. So once you get to standing, go ahead and turn the toes open. Go for that like 45 degrees ish angle. If you turn the toes open and you almost fall over backwards, maybe turn your toes back towards the front a little bit extra. It doesn't have to be, you know, the widest angle ever. So hands on the hips. Inhale, stand tall. And as you exhale, bend both knees towards both pinky toes at the same time and let the hips go straight down into a squat. We're just going to do three. So come all the way up and exhale, come all the way down. Good. Last time up, we'll linger in the next squat. So go ahead and come down. Good. And once you stay here, hands in front of the chest. Keep the knees pulling towards your back a little bit. Raise the hands and let the elbows touch in front of your heart. Okay. Three times. We're going to breathe in right here. And as you exhale, slide the shoulder blades together. It's a little bit counterintuitive. Inhale. Puff the upper back. And exhale, slide the shoulder blades together like you're popping that balloon. Last time, come together and open. Very nice. Come back to center. Separate the elbows. Bring the hands down to your hips. Straighten up out of this. Breathe a sigh of relief. And then turn your left toes towards the long end of your mat. Turn your front toes towards the short end of your mat. Bend the knee. Lean forward. Grab some earth. Lift the back heel and spin the toes so the knee can drop all the way down to the mat. Once again, you can grab that blanket or your towel or you can stay here because we're not going to be on the knee the whole time. Flatten the back foot. Take a moment to make sure you have a strong foundation through fingers, palms, fists, blocks, or tissue boxes. So enough that you have a, enough support, you can kind of press into them. You're going to press down into your hands, press down into the top of your foot, and let the knee lift up. So you've got like a long tail behind you. Okay, bend the knee. Let it come down. Give yourself a break. Twice more. Press through your fingers in the top of your foot, and then let the knee deeply bend and land. This is your last one. Hips lift straight up. Make sure you're not rocking your hips side to side as you rise, and then come back down. And to give yourself a bit of a break, turn the back toes under so the heel stands up. I'm going to find my blocks because I have short arms that don't reach the ground. So lift your front toes, balance on your heel, walk the blocks back. Straighten out that front leg. I always feel like a show horse kind of bowing over the front of your leg. If you can rest on your heel, then all you need is a wider stride. So lower your front foot, move the toes forward, and repeat. Toes up, blocks walk back. I get much less low when my foot goes out farther. So as long as you feel, this is for the underside of your front leg. As long as you feel it there, you're doing it right, okay? Pull your right hip back a little bit just to make sure your hips don't rock to the side. And then when you're done, you can walk your blocks forward, bend your front knee, bring the foot down to the ground, put the blocks out to the side, hands to the earth, lift the hips and the back knee up, and then step or slide the front foot towards the back. Root your palms, soft knees, breathe in your down dog here. And then go ahead and walk or hop up towards your hands. Stand on your two feet, raise up halfway. And then exhale, relax, dangle, bend the knees, sink the hips, reach the arms back like a skier, palms face down. 
Lift the upper body from your thighs. Press the feet into the mat. Stand long and tall and sweep the arms up. And then exhale. Relax the arms down in front of your heart. So we're going to do a nice standing stretch for our upper chest. You're going to want to move to a wall. I am conveniently located, but if you need to step off your mat, just come to whatever wall is closest to you. And let's start, say, on the, um, let's start on the left side. So put your left hand on the wall. So you're kind of facing parallel to it. And what you want to do is put your palm flat and let your fingertips point back behind you. Mm -hmm. Now, this may not feel like much. If you want to feel more, you can step your feet closer to the wall. And that'll really draw that arm back behind you. You should feel it the way I like to imagine where I feel it is if you put your opposite hand, your right hand, like you're pledging allegiance to the flag, put it over your heart. That's where you should feel it, that upper chest muscles. All right. So go to a space where you can feel this. In fact, you can keep your right palm here. It's kind of nice. I want you to breathe into that spot under your right palm, like you're puffing up that Pledge Allegiance hand. Take two more breaths here. Breath is a great way to deepen something. It doesn't all have to be physical or motion-oriented. I guess breath is motion, isn't it? So it's just more internal motion. So... Last breath here. Slide your right hand down away from your chest. Step away from the wall. Let the hand fall to the earth. Great. So now I want you to turn and face the wall. And once you're looking at the wall, I want you to put your right palm flat on front of the wall, uh, right in front of your gaze here. Bend your left knee and pick up your foot and see if with your left hand you can catch the arch of the foot behind you. This is kind of the same action that we were doing before on the wall. In fact, you could always, if you want to challenge yourself, place your right hand back in that Pledge of Allegiance position. But maybe for now you keep that right hand on the wall, and I'll give you the option to Pledge Allegiance later on. So hold on to your left foot. That's all you need to worry about now. Press the right foot down so you feel a little bit taller. Breathe in. And as you exhale, scoop your tailbone underneath you a little bit. Sometimes the knee will swing forward. That's okay. Keep the tailbone tucking under. And then shift the thigh and the knee back a bit without untucking the tailbone. Sometimes you don't get quite as far, but you're going to get a deeper stretch. All right, if you want the challenge, now is the time to pledge allegiance. You can put your right hand. This is your pectoralis muscle here. You can breathe right under your palm. It's a nice tactile sensation of where the breath can go, where we want to feel the stretch. And then bring the right hand back to the wall. Softly lower the left knee, release the foot, maybe shake it out a little bit. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So turn so the wall is on your side, and place the right palm flat on the wall, sticking the arm out behind you so the fingertips point um, in the direction your back is facing. If you do not feel much here, walk a little closer to the wall until you feel that stretch. Maybe place your left palm on your upper chest, pledge allegiance in the other direction. And I want you to take a few moments just to breathe here to that left palm that's on your upper chest. You should kind of feel it spreading and inflating. Last time. Then you can slide your left hand down, step away from the wall, and just let that right arm fall. So we're going to do the same balance pose. Turn to face the wall again. I'm going to do it on this side so you can see. This time the left palm is going to come flat to the wall. You're going to bend your right knee and catch the foot behind you. If you can catch the arch, that's really going to open your upper chest muscles more. That's what we've been working on. So keep the left hand supported. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, kind of curl your tailbone under you a little bit. That's just going to neutralize the angle of your hips. Then you can press your right thigh and knee back. You may not get too far. That's okay. Just don't let your belly spill forward. That's really going to compress your low back. That's the whole tailbone tucking under going to help with that. So if you want to practice balance a little bit more, you can take that left palm and one more time, put it on your right upper chest. Focus on a couple of slow, deep breaths under your fingertips to the palm of your hand. Imagine you can almost feel a little balloon under your hand swelling. And then you can press that hand back into the wall for support. And relax the raised knee, put it down, and walk yourself back to your mat. 
deep stretch and a challenging balance. So let's go ahead and come to the top of the mat. Sweep the arms up one more time. And exhale, open them wide, soften the knees, cascade the spine out and down. Good. Give your last halfway rise. Nice horizontal spine. And exhale, let the hands touch the mat. Step back through your right foot, toes under. Lift your hips and send the left foot back. Flatten through your palms. Bend your knees. This is your very last down dog. Reach your sit bones away from your wrists. Press the palms down into the earth. And whenever you're ready, you can take one or three breaths here. That's okay. But when you're done, you can let the knees come down to the ground. Uncurl your feet and let the hips travel back towards the toes as the body melts down over the legs. Soften into a child's pose. You can let your arms bend if you want or slide back down towards your body. No activation here. Just let yourself kind of fall across your legs, across your mat. Take a few deep breaths, slowing down that rhythm. Last breath where you are. And take your time as you lift your head, lift your hips. You're gonna come up onto hands and knees. Then we're gonna walk our hands a little bit forward, walk your knees a little bit back. We're just coming down onto your belly, really. So come down onto your belly and rest on one cheek or the other. Doesn't matter which, which but let your arms come back behind you. Let the palms face down towards the earth so the thumbs will point away from you. Okay, as you're here, take a breath in. And as you exhale, ground your hips down like they're trying to burrow through your mat to the floor below. Keep your hips grounding like that and point both feet like your toes want to touch something behind them. And then let your legs stay straight, reach back as they hover a bit. So maybe your kneecaps pick up off the ground without bending. All right. Same thing with your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your shoulders and lift your head. You can turn your gaze down kind of towards the top line of the mat in front of you. Make sure you keep your pinky toes facing the ground. A lot of times they flip open towards the walls. That compresses your low back a lot. So keep the feet square to the mat. Take one big breath. And then exhale, lower everything down. Rest on the opposite cheek. Breathe in. Sigh through the mouth. Maybe wiggle your hips a little bit. Rock them side to side. And we're going to do one more like that. So, so inhale, exhale, root your hips, reach your toes back like someone's pulling on your ankles, let them hover, lift up your hands, shoulders, and head, come back to where you were before. I like to pretend sometimes I, like someone's got a hold of my feet and my hands and are pulling both back. Sometimes that lets you lift up a bit higher. So inhale last time and exhale, lay down on your first cheek, looking back in the direction you started, look over hips. Breathe into the mouth, side to the mouth. It's impossible not to smile when you're doing your hips, so that always helps. <laughs> okay. As you're ready, bring your hands up by your shoulders. And just kind of lift your shoulders and head up very gently. We're not going for any sort of extreme lift here. We're going to stay on the belly, though. Palms on the ground. I want you to slide your hands back so they're alongside kind of the bottom half of your rib cage. So the hands are going to be flat. The elbows are going to be pretty lifted. If you need to take your hands a little bit wider, you can. So go ahead and turn your toes under here, too. Press into your hands. Lift your shoulders and head up a little bit so you kind of feel like you're getting a big back bend. Hug the elbows in so they're alongside your rib cage. Then I want you to press into your palms. Start to straighten your elbows even as you lift the weight up off your hips. Hips are still sagging down. And then... Point your toes one, point your toes two. Knees up, thighs up, hips up, lift your shoulders, look towards the front of the room. Good. Inhale. Exhale, let the knees come down, let the elbows bend and slowly roll your spine from hips to shoulders to head up. I want you to slide your hands stacked one on top of the other underneath your forehead. The elbows bend and you got a little cushion here. Slide your feet apart towards the corners of your mat. So your legs are kind of in a wide V behind you. And then pick up your feet so the toes point to the sky like little birthday candles. And then sway your feet to the right, 
to the left. A couple sways each way. Just help you loosen up here. Good. Okay. Go ahead and let the legs come into stillness. We're going to do one more. So put your feet back down. And you can draw them in so maybe the heels are in line with your sit bones. Lift your head off your hands. Pull your hands back towards your shoulders. And then slide them back towards your bottom ribs too. So they're really getting closer to your waistline. Not at your waistline, but in that general direction. So go ahead and start to lift your head and shoulders a bit. Curl your toes under. All right. You can press into your hands, start to lift your shoulders, and then lift your knees, press the arms straight. Come into kind of like a saggy plank, honestly. Lazy plank. Untuck your toes, one foot, one foot. Hips can sink a bit, but as you let your hips sink, make sure your tailbone is still tucking under and zipping up towards your belly button. You don't want a crimp and a big crease in your low back. You want length, shoulders come back, gaze goes forward. Just hold for a second, catch a breath, and let the knees come down slowly. Lower your hips, your navel, your low ribs. Bring your hands into your head, let the elbows wing wide. Separate the feet a good, healthy distance away. Bend the knees, birthday candle toes, and sway side to side. Kind of rocking to the inner and outer edges of the knees. Good. So bringing the legs back into center, you go ahead and put your feet back down. Keep your head and arms where they are, but slide your legs towards one another. Like instead of two legs, you just have one big leg. All right, leave the, let's say leave the left leg where it is and slide just the right toes towards the right corner of your mat. Maybe even slide that foot off the edge of the mat, and you'll notice the more you swing your leg wide, the more the toes want to turn open. Rest on the inner edge of your knee, not your kneecap, and then slide that inner edge of your knee up towards your shoulder, like your army crawling towards the front of the room. Turn to rest on your left cheek so your gaze is in the same direction as that raised knee. few more breaths where you are. Big and deep. And let your head come back to center. You can straighten out that bent knee, reach the toes back, and sweep them down the center line of your mat so it's snuggled up with the left leg. We're going to do the same thing on the left. So for starters, just keep your head centered. Left leg can sweep out wide. As the leg sweeps out wide, the toes are going to turn open. You're going to rest more on the arch of your foot. Yeah, and the inner soft edge of your knee. Bend and slide the inner soft edge of your knee towards your shoulder. Rest on your right cheek. Reacquaint yourself with those slow, deep breaths. Take two more. And then let your head turn back to center. Stretch the bent leg out long. Bring it back down the midline of your mat. And raise your head off your hands. You can bring your hands back alongside your ribs or your shoulders. We're just going to come up to hands and knees. We're just coming up off our belly. That's it. So walk around till you're on your hips, kind of transitioning from our front to our back. And as you lay down, make sure you have a strap nearby, just so it's conveniently located. Maybe even have a block nearby just in case. You may or may not need it later on. So as you lay down onto your back, keep the knees bent, and take that strap for now, and you're going to put it around the ball of your right foot. All right. So once the strap's around the ball of your right foot, let that leg lengthen outwards away from your body. It can be at a slight diagonal as the arms slide down to rest on the earth. So the back of your arms are cradled with your mat. And just take two breaths here. Keep that left knee bent. Keep the left foot flat. We're not going where you think. So put on your listening ears. 
And from here, I want you to kind of keep that right leg at its same angle, but straighten your arms up to the sky. You're raising the strap up so it's almost parallel to the ceiling. All right, then I want you to lift your left foot, bring the knee in towards your heart, cross the left ankle over your right thigh, and then bend the elbows and bring the uh, arms back down to the ground. So your right leg's still up straight, but you got this, uh, give yourself a little bit of time, maybe flex your left toes. Take your last breath. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing to reverse this here. So raise your arms straight up to the sky. That just gives you lots of room to withdraw your left foot. Put the left foot back on the mat and then draw the right knee down towards your heart. Remove the strap, put it to the side. Wrap your hands around your right knee and just roll your right ankle a little bit. Good. So with your right knee held gently in towards your tummy, you can keep a hold of that knee, but stretch your left leg out long and straight in front of you. Mm -hmm. Keep your left hand on your knee. Relax your right arm down alongside your body and use your left hand to draw that knee over your belly, letting your right hip lift and letting that right knee come down towards the ground. So if your knee doesn't get to the ground, mine doesn't, this is why I asked you to keep a block nearby. You can put a block under your right shin or even a rolled up blanket if that's closer to you than your blocks. Let your right shoulder stay down towards the ground. Maybe roll your gaze over your right shoulder. Take a moment to breathe here. And bring your head back to center. Lift your right knee off your block, bring it back to center. Keep a hold of your right knee for a second while you bend your left knee, put your left foot down flat. And then you can go ahead and put your right foot down flat as well. If you had a block, if you're using it, go ahead and move it to the other side. You're gonna need it again in a minute because we're gonna repeat those same two poses. So find your strap first or your scarf, whatever you have handy. Loop it around the ball of your left foot. Let your left leg straighten out away from you. Hands slide down, elbows on the mat. So once you catch a hold of your top foot, just breathe a second here. Nice long breath, nice long legs. So then when you're ready, you can lift your elbows from the ground and straighten the arms so that the strap becomes horizontal. Pick your right foot up, cross the right ankle right below your left kneecap so it's closer to your hip. Then bend the elbows back down, keeping a hold of that top foot. Maybe flex your right foot a little bit. Relax your shoulders. Feel the collarbones nice and broad, spacious in the chest. Sometimes it takes a while for the muscles here to release. So in the next breath or two, whenever you're feeling ready to move forward, you can repeat all of these moves straight and your arms up, raise the strap, just so you have room to slide your right foot off, put your right foot on the ground. Then you can bend the left knee down towards your heart. Just remove the strap, catch a hold of that left knee and roll the ankle a bit, crack your knuckles, <laughs> wiggle your toes. Keep a hold of the left knee and let the right leg straighten out long in front of you. Keep the right hand on the knee and release the left arm to the earth. And use the right hand to draw the knee over your belly, rocking onto the side of your right hip and bringing the knee down towards the earth, maybe finding that block or tissue box or blanket. Let it settle there for a moment. Roll your gaze over towards your left fingertips. Roll towards the back of your head once more. Lift the knee up away from wherever it's landed. 
Hug the knee in. Hug the right knee in too. And rock a little bit. Maybe circle your knees, letting them drift away from your heart, around and back to your heart. Come back to center. Put your feet down on the ground, and we're going to make our way into Shavasana. So if you really like that blanket or towel under your head, you can go ahead and add it. If you want to roll it up and put it under your knees, go ahead and do that now. Or if you want to just keep your knees bent, that's always an option to lean the knees together. But know that you may feel more comfortable in a different place than you were before because you're in a different place in your body than you were before. Your body's done a lot more. It's stretched and it's strengthened and it's released. So you can try legs long, try knees bent, and then just kind of choose your favorite for now, what really makes you feel the most comfortable. So as you relax here across the earth, Make comfortable space between your heels, comfortable space between your wrists and your hips. Make any little movements to fine tune down deeper into your comfort. Movements don't have to make sense. I don't have to cue you to do them. It's just like you get into bed at the end of a long day and you don't have a teacher there telling you how to adjust so you're more comfortable. You just kind of do it. As you come to a place where stillness is a more viable option, let your body sink down into the earth. Let it get heavy. Key word here being let. You don't have to push your body down or encourage it to root. Just allow it to release. Soften all the muscles of your face. If the muscles are sliding down towards the earth, letting go of your jaw, letting any tension, any stress, any strain, even any strength fade away into a distant memory. Let the breath move simply and sweetly through your body. Yourself a few moments in time just to be here, just to release here, just to enjoy where you are. Feeling the ease at which the breath slides through your body, unobstructed and unencumbered. Enjoy that open, effortless flow. Begin to invite that flow deeper and lower. Let the body begin to inflate and deflate. 
every time you breathe in and out. You can always move your fingers and toes a little bit to help your body wake up. Maybe roll your wrists and ankles if you feel like it. And then maybe if you want to reach your arms up alongside your ears, you can reach back as you point and flex your feet. Relax the arms down, soften the legs. Let the knees lift up as the feet flatten. And just like before, you can contemplate how you would like to come to a seat today. You can roll up and down on your spine or shift to the side and press your body up to a seat. Go ahead and lift the head, shoulders, and knees as you come into a nice cross leg support. You can always find your towels, your blankets, whatever makes you feel more at home. Crossing the legs. Let the hands come together in front of your heart. Just take a moment in stillness to really be where you are. Feel what you feel. Letting all sensation, all emotions, even all thoughts, letting all of those be welcomed in without resistance. The key is to let them go without resistance as well. Sometimes some of the thoughts or feelings are almost kind of sticky. We want to hold on to them and inspect them and get a little closer to them. But can you let them glide through your mind like a breeze through an open window? Let them come in and let them go out just as easily. We'll close with our chant for peace. You can always join or listen, but take a full breath in when you're ready to do so. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and that freedom for all. Raising your thumbs to your forehead. Honoring the light within one and all as we bow forward to the mantra, Namaste. Namaste. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope this video came through well to you. Um, as always, contact me directly at the email or the phone number on the website. Um, get in touch with me. Let me know what worked for you, what didn't work for you, especially technically. I need a lot of guidance in that situation. Um, I hope this helps you enjoy the rest of your day. Bring a little bit more peace in here so we can spread a little bit more peace out there. Until I see you next, take care.